the channel. My name is Kent Weir and today we're going to talk about automating CDS role assignments. Let's go. Alright, so why is this content important? So number one, I believe that everyone, regardless of their role, should strive to improve their own productivity. Some people feel that the Power Platform is just for citizen developers. Here, I'm just, I want to just stress the point that regardless of your role, you should always try to improve your productivity. And we're going to do that today. And one of the areas that we're going to do that in is actually automating the provisioning of CDS role assignments. Now you might be wondering, why are we doing this? You can already do this in Canvas apps. And this is true. When you share a Canvas app, you can choose to share the CDS role that you want with those users. But the reality is, is not everything is a Canvas app. For example, we might have model-driven apps where we want to provide permissions uh, beforehand and prep and get everything ready so that when we deploy the app, everyone has the right access. Dynamics 365, CE, customer experience, or what's traditionally known as CRM is another use case where you want to be able to automate the access to CRM, and that could be their license, that could be their environment, and lastly, that could be their security role. And then lastly, there might be Power Automate, where you want to ensure that people can go ahead and build their flows against CDS and that they have the correct role when their flow executes. And lastly, we also run into situations where we might want to automate the provisioning of, say, the system customizer role or the system administrator role. And we can actually go ahead and do so using the approach that I'm going to talk about here. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to bring attention to an emerging serverless community called Serverless Notes. At serverlessnotes.com, you will find a community where you can go ahead and subscribe to newsletters and also browse serverless tips. These serverless tips have been published by Microsoft experts and include technologies like Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure API Management, and many, many more. The Serverless Notes community is brought to you by Serverless 360, which builds tools that support your Azure serverless application deployments and is complementary to the Azure portal. You can Find out more at serverless360.com. So let's take a brief look at our solution architecture. So the goal of our solution is we want to be able to manually trigger it. And then what we want to be able to do is retrieve a list of users from an Excel spreadsheet. We're going to use all of these users in the Excel spreadsheet to ensure that they are provided with the right CDS security role. Now there's a few prerequisite calls that we need to make in order to do so. One is related to getting the underlying CDS user ID, which is essentially like a system ID for that user. We're going to have to do something similar when getting the role ID. And then naturally what we're going to need to do is take the, those two pieces of data and put them together and create a relationship. And the idea is we're going to be able to take the user, take the role, and then say, I want to assign this role to that user. And we can do that through the relate records action that is part of the CDS connector. Now I do want to give a bit of a shout out here to Microsoft and some of the folks there that really brought this solution to my attention. So James Olenek and the PowerCat team. So there was a thread going on with a few of those folks, Mark, Brian, Pratap, Denise. So thank you all for contributing to this as well. So let's go ahead, let's now see this in action and uh, walk through the solution. So the first thing that we have to discuss is we need a solution. In order for this flow to work, we need a solution. And the reason for it is we're going to use the relate records action, which is part of the CDS connector, but it's part of the CDS connector for a current environment. So this is also another thing to think about is that in order for the solution to work, this flow needs to be in the environment that you are wanting to assign a CDS role from. So you will not be able to say, oh, I'm going to use the same flow and be able to connect to say your prod CDS instance, your test CDS instance, your dev CDS instance. It all has to be the same one. So just something to be aware of. So you do need to create this solution in a solution, no pun intended. So here I've got this CDS role management. This is the name of my solution. Inside of here, I have a flow. 
Now this is the flow, as I talked about, we're gonna manually trigger it, and then we're gonna to connect to Excel Online. And I've got an Excel spreadsheet called New Users. It's a very simple spreadsheet. It's essentially one column, and it's just called UPN, and I've used a data table, so that's a must when working with Excel Online and Power Automate is you need to be able to use a, a data table. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna retrieve all of those rows. In this case, it's just one row, but I could have many. I could have 10 if I wanted to. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to loop through each record inside of that Excel spreadsheet and we are going to list records. Now in this case, we are going to list records on the user's entity. And then what we're gonna do is provide this filter query. And we're gonna use a filter query of domain name equals, and then we've got single quotes wrapped around our UPN, which is the field from our Excel spreadsheet. Now naturally we're gonna expect that only one record is returned. And uh, you know I'm not a big fan of loops, so what we're gonna do is we're going to try to shortcut adding those annoying apply to each actions when we know we only have one record coming back in. Now to avoid that loop, we do need to use an expression though. And the expression is going to use the first function, which is going to return the first node in our array that is returned from our list records call. And naturally we know that there is only one record, but we're gonna use first to force that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an expression that includes the outputs function, and then we need to provide the name of the action that we are going to capture the outputs by. Now this is extremely important. I'm gonna repeat that, this is extremely important. You'll notice that I've got this list underscore records underscore dash underscore users. How that relates, how that came about was that is actually the name of this action here which I had changed. It's always a good practice to change the name of your action so that they're user readable and you can understand their intent. And so that's where you'll see this underscore, underscore, underscore. That's a normal convention for basically escaping spaces inside of an expression. So if you call yours just list records, it will be a single quote, list underscore records, and then single quote, and then you would close it off with the end parentheses. Then this body slash value, this is really kind of like your, your JSON path for essentially just the message structure that gets returned from CDS. And then the name of our field is called system user ID. But the good news is once we've done this once, we have our user ID value, which is stored in a compose action that we can reuse later on in our relate records action. The next thing we need to do is we need to do something similar for the security roles. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna list records for our security roles, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide a filter query because in this case, I only want to get the ID for my custom role. Now, so I've created a role called my custom role. It doesn't have to be a custom role. For me, this was just the reality of the scenarios. Most of the time when you're provisioning this access, it's because you have a custom role but I wanna emphasize that it doesn't have to be a custom role. Now let's just take a quick look and I will show you what that looks like. So if we go, I'm in the admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. I'm in my default environment, which is where this flow is running. I can now go ahead and click on security roles. And within here, I've got my custom role. So that's something I've named, that's my terminology but I could have just as easily said, oh, I wanna get the environment maker or the system administrator role. Uh, in this case, I'm just using a custom role and that's okay. But this is why I have the filter query name equals then single quotes my custom role because I wanna get the underlying ID for that security role. Now I'm gonna do something similar where I'm going to use a compose action and an expression to get that value. Once again, I don't want to go and have these loops, a bunch of these additional loops. Now, to be aware, I have to do the same thing. Notice I've got list records dash security roles. So when I wanna get the outputs 
for that action, I need to include all of these underscores where I have spaces. And then we'll be able to use the JSON path to go ahead and parse this odata.id. Now you might be wondering, well, why are you going through all this expressions? Part of it is because this value isn't retrievable through our dynamic content. So here you won't find I have this odata.id value in here. So I'm essentially forced to go ahead and do that in order to get this value. And the reality is this value comes back as a URL. And I'll show you the output when we run this of what that value looks like. And that's why it's important that we pull it from here because you can't actually pull it from the dynamic content itself. Now, lastly, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to relate those records. So here we're saying, I wanna relate an entity name of users and the item ID is essentially from my user ID. So it's this action here. We're gonna take this ID and it's essentially gonna get populated here. Then we're gonna be creating a relationship against this security role. And this is a system user roles association. So this is something that's in the underpinnings of CDS. This isn't something that I've created. That should just be in the system. Lastly, we're then gonna take this URL which is a little bit misleading because it's truly our role ID, but it does happen to be a URL. And perhaps that's why this attribute is called URL. Fair enough, but that will then take this role and basically assign it to this user. So that's the walkthrough of the flow. Let's go ahead, let's now run it. Now, just to make sure I'm not cheating, uh, I showed you here my, my user is Kent Weir. And I have a user that already exists in this environment, but let's just go ahead and double check on their roles. And what we should find is that my custom role is not selected. So this is not a role that has been assigned to my Kent Weir user. So let's now run this. And then the expectation is that that role does get assigned by using this flow. So we're just going to go ahead and run the test click on run flow. So we'll just take a few seconds and we should get green lights and then we'll go back and review and make sure that our role has been assigned. Great. So that works. Let's just take a look under the hood. So here, this is our essentially our system ID for our user from CDS. And then here is that URL. So if we scroll over, we can see like this is essentially that, that ID for that role but we need this entire URL, including the environment name, so that when we go ahead and relate these records, we can see we've got our user ID plus the URL, and then what'll happen is that role will get assigned to that user. So let's head back over to our users inside of CDS, and let's click on Manage Roles. For Kent Weir, let's scroll down, and boom, there you go. We've got my custom role that has been assigned to our user Kent Weir, which is pretty awesome. Previously, this was like manual. You would always have to manually do this. And so I'm really pumped that this works and that I can now do this in an automated fashion, which is awesome. That concludes this episode. I hope you found that beneficial. I'm very confident that you will be able to improve your productivity by using that approach. If you're not following me on social media, I encourage you to do so. You'll find me on Twitter with the handle of at Weirzy. Uh, naturally, you're watching this video on YouTube, but I would really appreciate if you could go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. If you have, thank you very much. Lastly, if you are interested in additional training, I do have some discount codes for my Udemy courses on Azure Logic Apps and Power Automate which you can go ahead and find at bit.ly slash kentweirudemy. And uh, I've got some great discount codes for you there. So that's it. Thanks. And we'll see you next time on the channel.